I also saw a few people telling me that I guess we'll have to settle for Bo because they don't think Penix will be there by pick 12. It, uh, I got a pretty, I got a pretty good job. <laughs> dude, like some of the draft takes at Broncos country be cracking me up, dude. I swear. Welcome back to another episode of the Broncos Avenue Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Amir Farrow, with my co-hosts, J-Mac and Jordan. Back at you guys with another episode. We got a lot, to t- uh, a lot of stuff to talk about in terms of Broncos news, some signings that we missed last week, and then a f- two signings that were made uh, both today and yesterday. And then we have, obviously, the main topic of today's episode. Talk a little bit about Jarrett Stidham and the Broncos QB1 situation. There's a lot of rumors circulating and swirling out there. We're going to talk a little bit about that towards the end, but if you're listening on YouTube, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. Lots to talk about. J Mac Join, how are you guys doing? Doing good, man. Uh, my spring break's over. You know, the, the week is school's back, man. It's kind of tough, but I mean, it is what it is. I'm doing good. Can't complain. Yeah, I'm doing good. Just I, I need the draft to come a lot sooner. I mean, I just need I need this draft to be over with. I need to know who we're getting, but yeah, every, everything's been good. So let's go and jump straight into the news. The Broncos last week uh, came to terms, agreed to terms with former Commanders linebacker Cody Barton on a one-year, $3.5 million deal. Barton started 13 games last season for Washington, had 121 tackles and a pick uh, and a PBU as well in 2023. Um, What are your guys' uh, initial thoughts on that signing and how is that signing kind of like sat on your minds after a few days? I like the signing. Uh, I got to watch him the most in Seattle. I didn't get a, a chance to really see what he did in Washington that much last year, but I know for Seattle he was pretty much a he was very underrated. He's got a lot of speed and he's got a he's got a really good mentality about him. He strictly just attacks the football. I thought it was a really good signing, but um, I think I think you still need to kind of address his position. Uh, just you know, maybe Drew can be the starter, but it's it's really good depth for the uh, for the linebacker spot. I mean, hey, look if he starts. I mean, he's been pretty good. Though. He's been pretty good in, in his career as of late. So it wouldn't be the worst thing. Yeah, it looks like Denver is going with a lot of signings of free agency that are like low risk but high reward type signings, a lot of valuable signings in terms of like contract wise. So, again, I think it could work out really good for Denver. Right now, I just think of him as like more of a depth guy in the linebacker room. But if he ultimately becomes the starter, I wouldn't mind that at all. I mean, he had a, he had a good year last year. So you never know with, uh, with Barton. I mean, he's, he's, he's not bad, especially with the contract that we got him. So, again, if he uh, sparks up that room with Alex Singleton and all the other guys that we get into that room, it, it'd be a great signing. Yeah, um, pretty poor run defender last year. He's really good coverage linebacker, though, over the middle of the field. So that's something that the Broncos lost ultimately by Josie Jewell signing with the Panthers. They feel that. That um that absence there in terms of coverage at least uh run defending Alex Singleton's gonna need to have a big season honestly I do see this as a downgrade personally to Josie Jewell I'm a, I'm a big Josie Jewell guy um I think he's gonna ball out with Evero there in Carolina great signing for them but um I do think this is a downgrade uh, but for the contract for just the contract it's a pretty good signing um I don't have a lot of high expectations for him um but at the end of the day this could turn out to be a, a massive value signing if he pans out and does well in Denver I do expect him to start week 1 alongside Alex Singleton I don't see this as um kind of like a a mentor type thing that he, he could be like a mentor to you know uh, Drew Sanders, if they if they do want him to move back to inside, but I, I really don't know what their their plan is there. We talked about it the other day. I don't know if they want Drew to stay outside or stay move back inside. My guess is they're gonna keep him at outside because just the Broncos love screwing around with the development of their young players. But um, next, uh, the Broncos re-signed linebacker, special teams ace Justin Sternod to a one-year deal. We had him on the pod last year, an absolute uh, stand-up guy, um, big time, uh, you know, veteran re-signing here um uh, one of the big uh you know awesome guys in the locker room at least we heard a lot of good stories about him you know play madden with the the you know teammates and all that stuff like he's really well liked in the locker room but he's also one of our studs on special teams so this is a no-brainer um almost lost him to the panthers but he pulled a will lutz and decided to come back to denver so uh, what are your guys' thoughts on this resigning something about these plot twists with these broncos free agents man i don't know what it is but hey i'm loving every bit of it but no i I thought it was really good bringing them back i think it's really good for the special teams um and just like you said to have that type of guy 
coming back in the locker room, you know, it's 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 a pretty tough uh offseason. So just to have some type of familiar faces around will be good for the team. But hey man, he he might mess around and be maybe I, I don't want to say he's gonna be the cap a captain of special teams, but I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a bigger role. Yeah, I mean, he's also shown some flashes uh, during training camp and stuff as being just a linebacker, too. So mm-hmm. uh, it's good to see that he signed back with us and he had a change of heart. Uh, he is also a core special team, like I, how you guys mentioned. So it's big for our special teams as well. It's just very interesting to see that, you know, another player has a change of heart and comes to the Broncos. I know he doesn't have the biggest name, but still, that's two players now that has a change of heart, goes back to Denver. I don't know. I was told that players yeah. hate playing for Sean Payton, but yeah. it looks like that is not actually the case. But yeah, just it, it's it's awesome to see that another guy like Trinod is coming back. Dude, it's so funny because I see so many comments on my Instagram that are like, yeah, I don't think you guys realize this whole Russell Wilson situation last year really is the reason the Broncos aren't signing a ton of free agents. Nobody wants to come play in Denver. That's not the case at all right now. Um, yeah. They're in the middle of like kind of a reset year. They're not going to – they are they have around like 26 mil in cap right now. There's still a lot of teams that are like way up in cap space, and they're not making a ton of moves. Um, it's yeah. just because at this point, you still got to account for your free agent class – or excuse me, your, your draft class, um, then potentially signing free agents around training camp. There's that wave. Then also um, you got the trade deadline and all that, and you get extend can, extension candidates. Like you're not going to just blow all your money and go to zero mil in cap space right now. Like – I there's a lot of people asking me why aren't the Broncos making any moves right now? It's just like why would they right now? But there's still there's not even really that many players out there to begin with. It's not like we're we're like oh my god we need to get all the competitors right now. We're in a 49ers type mode where we think we could go to the Super Bowl this year. Like let's just let's just be realistic. But um, next the Broncos did make a signing uh, outside of their own roster. They signed former Giants third round offensive tackle Matt Parrott to a one year deal. Um, he had six penalties and 820 snaps through four years in New York. So um, pretty good stat there, uh, but he does have a long injury history. Um, dealt with shoulder issues, a torn ACL, hamstring issues, multiple ankle sprains on both of his ankles. Um, I'm going to always keep it 100 with you guys. I don't like the signing. I don't. I think it's a. I think it's a good, like... I understand you're getting younger from Cam Fleming and finding that swing tackle option, but I'm a big Alex Palczewski guy. I don't see why he can't learn some left tackle this offseason. Yeah, I mean, the the signing, it was uh, – I mean, I liked it because I I said a few a few episodes ago that I felt like we needed more offensive line depth. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you got that aspect of it. But, I mean, it's fine. I mean, there's still a chance. I mean, we didn't sign him to like a – amazing deal so like he still could be a very well very well be a cut candidate you know as yeah. training camp as the season gets ready to start along but for now i mean it's okay to have as many offensive linemen in the room as you can just because if anybody goes down man you got to have guys ready so yeah i mean he was the uh 99th overall pick in the third round for a reason so there has to be some talent in there again i know he has a long injury history as well but he's he's only 27 now, again, I'm not saying he's going to be starting for us, but again, depth wise, I think it's fine. Uh, I know in 2023, he had 91 pass blocks. He had six pressures allowed, zero sacks. So he only had one QB hit. So it's an improvement from his other years for sure. But again, I think there's just more of a depth signing and just, a, again, another signing that is low risk, but another high reward type signing. Yeah, I don't think it's going to hurt us a lot. It was probably a vet minimum. Um, and if any if any team that he could go to that could help him out in his growth and development, it's Zach Streif, offensive line coach Zach Streif with the Broncos. So on that aspect, I'm not as super mad about it. But the injury history, I've said it a lot on the show. Like I don't like signing players with the long injury history. Um, but hey, pray, prayers to the guy. A lot of players seem to be coming to Denver, and it's just like the injuries are going way down after last year because of all the you know what Sean Payne is introducing with the whole strength and conditioning staff. So that there's there's there, you know there's positives to it. I'm not going to completely crap on the signing. I just feel like there are better options out there, and uh, I wouldn't have hated drafting a tackle uh, like at some point in this draft either. Um, so next, uh, let's get let's get to the main topic of today's episode. We've been seeing a lot of rumors uh, out there, especially Mike Kliss, who's been just always like money with Broncos news. Um, according to Mike Kliss and multiple sources uh, there in Denver, there's a popular belief and expectation that Jarrett Sidham will be 
the Denver Broncos week one starter in 2024, even if the Broncos draft a quarterback 12th overall or even trade up for one uh, and J.J. McCarthy or maybe even Drake May by possibility. Um, but what are your guys' uh, thoughts on just Jared Sitta potentially being like the bridge starter to a rookie this upcoming season? We don't know our schedule yet, so that could play a big factor into it in terms of who the opponent is. Um, but what would your just overall thoughts on that report? Yeah, I talked about this last night on TikTok, and a lot of people who watch the podcast asked me this question. Um, I honestly think that I'm not I'm not opposed to it. Um, it's not a, it's not what I want, but I could see it be one it being one of those scenarios where Stidham goes out there and Sean just wants. I, I can see Sean wanting him to start to kind of show the rookie how you're supposed to operate as a QB one. With you know things you're supposed to do like preparing for game day and just just the little things and you know have them go out there because this season is a throwaway season like I don't think this season is like we're not act, like everybody knows the Broncos aren't going to contend this year so it's still going to be a respectable season but it's just a kind of just a like a, a it's, a, it's a throwaway season so I, I can see one of those scenarios where we start Stidham for the first few games and not doing too well and then then we go to the rookie I think that that that's probably what it's going to be. Um, and with that, I'm fine. As long as like, you know, Sean is, Sean isn't just going to start Stidham for like the first 12 games of the season and then go to the rookie and just throw him in the fire like that, you know? So. Yeah. My only thing with this, I'm not opposed to the deal, uh, thing as well. The only thing is I hope we do have a rookie quarterback behind Stidham. I don't want a quarterback room of Jarrett Stidham. <laughs> Ryan Tannehill and another backup quarterback as our third string. There has to be a rookie in there, whether it's JJ McCarthy. I mean, I hope Drake may or Bo Nix, even at that point, if we don't get anybody and we trade back, at least let it be Michael Pratt. Let it just be a rookie going behind. We cannot go into the season with our quarterback room, not having one rookie in it. We need to have something to look forward to. We all, it's the worst kept secret in the league. The Denver Broncos are in for a quarterback in the draft. So at this point, I can't have Stidham being the week one starter without a rookie right behind him learning from Stidham. I have a question for y'all, and I've thought about this so much. Like, do you feel like it's almost like the Broncos have to, like, 100% have to draft a quarterback in the first round? Like, what, what would you guys do? George Payne did this in 2021 and kind of just stuck it out with a uh, lock and whoever, but, um, what if like Sean Payne doesn't fall in love with a Bo Nix or a JJ McCarthy? JJ, let's say he really likes JJ, but he isn't able to trade up for him because let's say Minnesota pulls something off, and let's say Sean Payne isn't the biggest Bo Nix guy, and he isn't a big uh, Spencer Rattler, or Michael Pratt guy in the third or fourth round. Like, how angry will you guys be if we just like what? What's the plan at that point with just like Jared Siddham and like Orion Tannehill, like? What will be the thought like going into the season with just those two guys? Like, could you see that happening? The one thing I can see happening is us not taking one in the first round and finding our ways trading back up in the second to to snag a guy. Um, because the way it's looking, the only team I'm really worried about after us taking the quarterback is the Raiders. Yeah. And um, I but I could see the Broncos like doing a trade down thing to trade back down the first, get a second if they if they can somehow pull that off. Cause I mean, our pick is still relatively high. Um, but if we just don't take a quarterback this year, I mean, I mean, you might as well just lose every single game of the season and just get the first pick next year. But then again, you have to – it's just – this is the year for a quarterback. I don't think next year's class is going to be anything spectacular as far as quarterback-wise. So I feel like they know that this year's draft class is the best we're going to get for a minute because I'm not I'm not all in for tanking to get, to, to get Shador or uh, – Quinn Ewers like I, I'm I'm just I'm not on board with that it, it will be very strange like it will be like a well what the hell is the plan like do you make a like you try to trade for a guy like but no I, I I don't see a scenario where the Broncos just don't take a quarterback in the first two rounds I think we'll have a quarterback in the first two rounds so yeah whether he trades down from that 12 spot and I mean I hope the best case scenario is that they get so much intel to the point that they know Bo Nix will fall, yeah. that they trade down, recoup a second-round pick while still being in the first round, so they trade back to like in the 20s or whatever. Well, they need to find a team that's willing to move up, which is the hardest part. But, again, trading back down, staying in the first round, recouping a second, 
drafting Bo Nix and then maybe getting some other assets after that. But again, that's best case scenario. Worst case is that they do trade down and then Bo Nix does get snagged before him. You still go in with your with your main guys, but you have to get at least a Michael Pratt later in the draft. You you have yeah. to have a rookie going into the season. I, it's just going to be a hard selling point for the fans, I, for sure for the fans going into the season. If we don't have a rookie quarterback, I mean, God knows what's going to happen to that stadium in Denver over there. Should have just kept Russ at that point. Yeah, so who knows? But again, I, they, a quarterback has to be taken no matter what in this draft. Unless they have a trade cooking up for we don't know who. But again, it has to be a quarterback has to be on this roster that is for the future. Yeah, I don't think they cut Russ with the intention of not taking a rookie in this draft. I, it's just like to me, I don't know. I still get this feeling that Sean really wants to get like aggressive and trade up for one of these guys. I, I don't feel like he just. I like Bo Nix, but I don't know. I feel like when Sean Payne wants something, he's going to get it. And the whole trade down thing, I just can't buy it, bro. I can't. I, I would be so damn shocked if Sean Payton's like, yeah, we cut Russ last year. Now I'm going to go and play the game of, yeah, can I trade down and get Bo Nix and get a pick? Like, I I don't know. It's just too risky. Like, you're literally banking your entire 2024 season off that. And potentially well, even more years after that. And Peter Schrager even put out that if Sean Payton wants him, he's going to get it. Because remember last time with the Saints, he was he was head on to that, going to pick Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. And the Chiefs traded up. He's but not going to make that sure, mistake again. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Payne has PTSD from that. So <laughs> I think he's a, he's going to get what he wants. And hopefully, hopefully within the next few days or weeks, we get a notification. The Broncos have traded up and stuff like that. That would be awesome. Like That would just solidify the fact that we're going to get a quarterback Sean Payne wants and loves. Um, but, yeah, again, it, it all depends on what happens. Again, everything is – like I'm so anxious for something to happen because we, we – like Broncos fans and – they and the NFL world just needs to know what Denver's doing at quarterback. Everyone needs yeah. to know. Yeah, I if I had to put money on it, I don't really see us trading up just because of like I just don't see us trading up. I, the only spot I could really see us trading up is five because Arizona seems like they they're hell bent on taking a receiver there. So I think, but five is the Chargers pick, and they're not trading it to us. So I feel like you, it, it's going to be hard to trade up. Then I mean. You don't know what the Giants want to do and everything, but I think 12 – I think Bo Nix will be there at 12, and I think that's the pick. I just think trading down is risky because if you trade down and the Raiders are sitting there at 13, what's stopping them from picking them? Like, it's nothing like, – like, like you would just have to go off of great intel that, oh, they're, they're going to go somewhere else when they don't have a quarterback on their roster. So, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I, I see it. I could see a team like – like, here's the thing. Like, here's what will happen to Denver. Say we take, I've been seeing people say we take Bowers at 12. We trade down. I can see a team like the Raiders going back in just before us, like taking their pick at 13, finding a way to trade back to get a quarterback. I don't want that to happen. I would just say take take who's ever at 12, and then you keep moving on. Because like like Amir said, you, you can't risk your whole season and possibly future years off of just the pure hope that the guy's going to be there at your pick. Like, you can't do that. I just don't understand this, like, fascination by fans of like accumulating all these draft picks when the most important damn position on your team <laughs> is quarterback like holy shit I'm, I'm just being honest like there's yeah we have holes to fill but quarterback needs to be filled we can't go like you guys said we can't go into next year with ryan Tannehill and jared Sidham. can't and, and at that point if there's not a quarterback selected in the first round and we do trade back and whatever we get more draft picks you have to believe that Sean Payne's just in love with Michael Pratt or one of those back end guys. Cause I I've heard a lot of steam with Michael Pratt and Sean Payne. And I think Michael Pratt was like the very first one to say that, Oh yeah. Uh, Sean Payne met with me. I think that was the very first quarterback that I met with Sean Payne. So like there has to be something there. And again, if that's not, we take a guy at the first in the first round, especially at 12, that means it has to be a guy like Pratt later in the rounds. You can't go into the season with Stidham and Tannehill and whoever else. You just can't. I also fine with Pratt. With Pratt as like the the future, no. Personally, I did at this point. At this point, if we tra if we do trade back and get more picks, then we go after Pratt. If Sean Payne is that much in love with Pratt and sees something that we don't, I'm go ahead. 
Pro- yeah, prove I'm, it. I'm like, yeah, you like, do you, Sean. I'm not gonna judge you off of that. You do yeah. you. I can't. I can't. In in everybody who's saying Bo, oh yeah, y'all, oh you know we can get Bo Nix in the second round. I don't think Bo Nix is. It's not. I don't think it's a way in hell Bo Nix falls to the second round. Like I feel like there will be a team who will trade up to get him late in the first round or somewhere in the mid to late first round if he falls that far. I don't want. Like I'm not banking on that. Like I look, Brock Bowers is a hell of a player. I'm not saying I wouldn't want Brock. If we had a QB, I would love to get a Brock Bowers, yeah. but we don't. So like. I don't get people is like, no, nah, man, we're gonna take the tight end and then hope and pray to God that Bo Nix. No, like that's not that's that's not smart. Like why why would you do that? You're gonna go out there with a bum and then just have a really good tight end and the receiving core that we have. Like that's just that's stupid. Let me ask everybody and all the listeners. Let me let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. What if we do take Brock Bowers or Tyrion Arnold at twelve or something like that, and we hope that somehow a Bo Nix falls to the second we trade up and he a- ends up like getting selected in the late first, like J-Max said, what, what, what then? Like, I know we talked about, oh. we talked about Pratt and Spencer Rattler, but I'm, I'm one of those people. I don't feel like quarterback. I feel like it's so rare that outside of the first round quarterbacks actually work. Honestly, outside of the top 12 quarterbacks almost never work. Um, granted we do have Sean Payton, so that's great. I do see where you're coming from that on that Jordan, but I don't know. I'm just at this point. I don't want anybody not named JJ McCarthy, Bo Nix, and obviously the top three, which we're probably not getting. But I that's where I'm at. Good quarterbacks don't fall. They never fall out of the first round. Like I, I when I say that, I mean like going into the draft. If you're listed as one of the top quarterbacks, you don't fall. Like like that's just you're not gonna fall to the second mid second round. Like I'll be like I just don't think that's gonna happen. I saw somewhere somebody mock draft that the Raiders are gonna take Penix at thirteen, but I don't want to bank on that. So like I, I'm not I'm not gonna bank on them taking Penix and then what? Like I mean un- uh, unless we know on really good authority that Bo Nix is gonna fall, but I don't think he's falling to the second round though. But in, I don't think the Broncos are gonna move heaven and earth to trade back into the first round. Cause you're gonna have to go off of next year's picks to do that. You're gonna have to come off at least, at least a second of your next year's pick and probably one of the thirds we have. So, no. Yeah, I, it's it's gonna be interesting. Like, man, it, I, the reaction on social media is gonna be insane if it's not a first round quarterback that we select. But again, I in my like just my personal preference. I, I really hope it's JJ. If it's not JJ, I want it to be Bo Nix. If it's, if it's neither of those two and we pick, let's say, a Brock Bowers at 12, then you have to believe that Sean Payne's sight is, has always been on Michael Pratt. You just have to believe that. Yeah. I won't be too enthused by it, but I'll also be shocked by that as well. I don't know. I feel like Sean wants one of these top guys. And I honestly, I, I still get that feeling that he wants to do something like that nobody's really expecting in the first round. I, I don't know. I just get that feeling. He might just stay. Pe- he just might stay put and take Bo at twelve. But it's Sean Payton, man. I mean, I will say Drew Brees was selected in the second round with the last pick in the second round. So he's technically like a third rounder. Um, so I can see how. I know. Again, I know Sean didn't draft him, yeah. but still, I can see that process working out. I'm just saying. I'm not saying to get ready for it but still I can I can see I can see that as the worst case scenario of like Michael Pratt and that type of process and system working out but still I really do hope it's a Drake May or a Bo Nix or JJ McCarthy I also saw a few people telling me that I guess we'll have to settle for Bo because they don't think Penix will be there by pick 12 it uh I got a pretty I got a pretty good job <laughs> Dude like some of the draft takes at Broncos country be cracking me up dude I swear but uh yeah, J Max very disappointed. Look what you guys did. But well, um, that's gonna be it for today's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you're listening out of YouTube, please hit the like button, uh, comment down below, uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you're li- <laughs> like, I'm sorry, it's just like there's no way someone actually said that 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 that's stupid. There's no way somebody actually said, oh, they're gonna take both because Penix is gonna be there. Oh, are we serious? Like, are we actually serious right now? Like, I'm sorry. Just, I just, I can't believe that shit. Yeah, I've seen multiple comments like that too. It's oh just, my God. um, with that being said, I'm your host, Amir Farrell, with my co-host, Jay Mac and Jordan. To the next one, peace out, everybody. Peace out, everybody. <laughs>